What's up, everybody? Love is in the air. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So I figured, why not talk about my love, my union of love. If you watched my wedding vlog, my anniversary vlog, in there I said, oh my God, I should do a video where I give you guys all the tips and the budget tricks on how to save money for your weddings. And I asked you guys to comment below if that was something you wanted. You say yes. So today's the day I'm gonna share with you all of my tips on how to have a bomb wedding on a budget. Before we get started, I wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of my new subscribers. You guys, we are so close to one million. If you are watching this and you are not subscribed, yo, it's the season of love. Show your girl some love. Hit that subscribe button and help us get to a million followers in 2020. Super excited about it. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. One of the ways that Israel and I thought would be a huge budget saver was having a destination wedding. Now I know for some of you guys watching, you're like, wait, what the heck? That sounds more expensive. Lies, and I'm gonna tell you why. If you are having a wedding in the city where you know every single person from the day you were born, they will feel that they should be invited to your wedding. You may feel obliged to invite them to your wedding, hence creating a much longer guest list, hence creating a much longer dinner list and more plates and more meals that you have to pay for, which again, just makes the budget go out of control. If someone wanted to attend our wedding, they were gonna have to pay to come all the way to Paris, pay for their room and board, all that good stuff. And we assumed most people cheap like us and they're not gonna wanna pay for that. So we're like, oh, that cuts down our guest list in half. We sent out 100 invitations, hoping that only 50 would actually decide to put up the money to attend the wedding. It ended up being 80 people. A lot of people came out and showed us love, which I am still grateful for. But trust me, had I got married in either LA or New York City, I easily would have had like 300 wedding guests, easily. So just saying destination wedding, tell them you're not paying for anyone to come. If you'd like to be there, great. If not, thank you, send your blessing. I had the brilliant idea of sending out save the dates via text message. Guys, it does not take a professional photographer to take your photos for a save the date. I did none of that. I literally had my cousin, Caleb, who had a bomb Canon camera. I told him, let's walk in front of the steps by Sex in the City. Oh, you have it. <gasps> Thank you, babe. Okay, it said top secret. Oh, this was my save the date. And it said top secret with an Eiffel Tower, two Polaroid pictures, and a passport, and like stamps of like the Eiffel Tower under here. And it said, your mission should you choose to accept is to join Israel and Adrian in Paris. You have 48 hours to email Paris 1111 with the ad an email address, which by the way, an email address is also free to make. That was free providing a, a mailing address so that we could then send you the formal invite. These photos of us in these 1111 jackets, Israel found them randomly online from a company called 11 Paris. He must have paid maybe 25 bucks for the jackets. We threw the jackets on, they matched, they say 1111 from the back. We walked down the street, that's on the same block of Carrie Bradshaw's apartment. I love that on the Polaroid under here, it said the day 111-16. Got it? Amazing, join us in Paris, send us an e a mailing address. This was my brilliant idea. I'll tell you what wasn't my brilliant idea. The biggest waste of money at my wedding was my paper invitations. Not only did I spend like, what, how much was it, Lana? Like almost $3,000? Yeah. Almost $3,000 in invitations. I had it custom made and I'm not gonna lie. I still didn't completely love it when I got it. And just today, I wanted to be able to show it to you, to say, hey, this is my wedding invitation. Ask me where it is. No, really, go, go ahead, ask me. Say out loud, Adrian, where's your wedding invitation? Okay, I don't know. <gasps> we can't find it. It's somewhere in this house, but we can't find it. And guess what? Neither can anyone else that was invited. They took their phones and they wrote down Adrian's wedding, 11, 11, 16, and then they took the invitation and they threw it in the garbage. It was the biggest waste of money 
and it was the biggest waste of time because we spent so much time and effort creating the invitations. Don't want to be that person preaching to you, but here goes my spiel, my, sh my spiel. It is not good to waste paper. So if we're gonna complain about wasting plastic, let's also be mindful about our paper usage. So save money on invitations, go digital, and also it's good for the environment and it's good for your budget. Moving right along. I saved a lot of money on my wedding party because I didn't have one. I think wedding parties can get super expensive. Actually, I'm really curious. Um, comment below if you had a huge wedding party and that that felt like a larger expense to you. I didn't have one, so I actually don't know what I would have spent a bunch of money on, but I feel something in my spirit is telling me that had I had 15 bridesmaids, like it was a damn quinceanera, it would have cost me a lot more money, whether it was travel for photos and all that stuff. Like it just would have got more expensive and just more complicated. So I chose to only have one person in my bridal party. It was my sister and my husband had his brother, Chris. It was our maid of honor and our best man. And that was it. And I absolutely loved it that way. It is 2020 people. We can consolidate, make things chic and simple. You guys know that I am all about high, low. So I would say when it came to clothes and accessories, I really killed it on this one. Obviously my gown, I went all out for it. It was custom made by Ryan and Walter and they did an absolutely incredible job. I was obsessed with my dress. Literally, I, I budgeted on everything else. Are you ready? Baby, we went high, high and low, low. For beginners. When I got to Paris, I actually had a welcome dinner on the Seine River. We took out a yacht and had a dinner cruise, and it was incredible, my rehearsal dinner, and I obviously wanted to wear a beautiful white dress. Here is my beautiful dress. It was from ASOS, you guys. I was obsessed with it. I felt like it had a very Lon Vaughn feel, which I feel that people thought it was. They're like, oh, she's probably wearing a Lon Vaughn dress. I was like, mm, no, it was, 65 bucks on ASOS, it was like 65, I think altogether I might have paid 75 with shipping from the UK. The other thing I saved on was my something blue. I didn't know what I wanted my something blue to be. I definitely knew that I didn't want a bright blue garter, just not my vibe. So instead, I ordered this on ASOS, how much was it? 30 bucks. It was 30 bucks from ASOS, baby. Let me dust off my, my wedding clutch, here it is. This was my wedding clutch. At no point did I actually, was I walking around holding it. It pretty much just sat next to me at my wedding table and it was my something blue. 30 bucks, people. My shoes. I know a lot of brides that go and spend thousands of dollars on like a Christian Louboutin, red bottom. I'm a weirdo. I thought the red bottom was gonna be distracting, so I didn't want that, that was one. And then two, I knew that I wanted to be comfortable in my heels, so I went with None other than Bagley Mishka. I got them like an ivory. I didn't get the bright, bright white. And they had this beautiful decoration in the back of them. The hashtag for my wedding was La Vie and Rose Gold. I love that the inside of the shoe was rose gold. I thought that would look really pretty for pictures. Don't spend a bunch of money on your shoes, especially if they don't see them. Wear a pair of comfortable shoes that you already own that you know you can walk in. No one's gonna see them. And if they are gonna see them, don't spend a lot of money on your shoes. How often are you gonna wear shoes with all this diamonds on them. It's like, these are clearly wedding shoes that you're hopefully only gonna wear once because you only get married once, hopefully. I also think it's important um, to not spend money just for the sake of spending money or just for the sake of saying, oh, something is fancy or brand new. My husband actually wore a tuxedo that I gave him as a gift. I got it at the Tom Ford outlet at Woodbury Commons in New York for like, a quarter of the price of what a Tom Ford tux would cost. Bought it, gave it to him as a gift, and that is the tuxedo that he wore for our wedding, which I think is really special that he didn't go and like get a whole brand new suit. So that was special. Guys out there, if you have a tuxedo already, it's okay to still wear something that you already have. As long as it looks great, get it dry cleaned, or there's also always the option to rent a tux.
When it came to decor, I saved money in the place that I realized was gonna be the most expensive. I originally had this whole idea about this flower wall that I wanted behind us, like this beautiful, stunning thing. I was asked, do you want real flowers or fake flowers? And naturally I was like, oh my God, I want real flowers, like this is my wedding. And then I heard the price of what that would cost. And I was like, oh, hell no. So I decided to opt for a mixture. If you look closely at the photos in my wedding, I honestly cannot tell the difference. I was walking up to flowers that were right next to fake flowers and real flowers, and I could not tell the difference. So I asked for a mix of a fake flower wall with real flowers hanging in front of it. And that saved me thousands of dollars. Also, we repurposed our flowers. Oh my God, this was the most genius thing ever. I got married in one ballroom. That was where my ceremony was. And we had flowers that were a backdrop of a wall, like all over the place. We had flowers going down the aisle, like tons of flowers everywhere. After the ceremony, Everyone left the ceremony room and went to cocktail hour, which was in a hall. They transferred all of the flowers from my ceremony and repurposed them in the ballroom that I did my reception in. Do you guys understand how much money that saved me? Literally, we took a little, everybody stop down. Boom, and they like, I think it was pretty funny because I think there were some people that like during cocktail hour tried to go back into the ceremony room to take photos. Oh no, girl, that flower wall has been gone. It is repurposed in the other room. When I heard of the idea at first, I was like, is this tacky or is this genius? It was genius. The cake had, what, it was three towers? A three or four tower cake. But here's the secret, everybody. Only one of those towers was cake. The rest of it was actually styrofoam, which again saves you so much money. So you're only having the other layers of the cake are just decorative, and you just have one or two layers of actual cake for your guests. Wait, your cake was six tiers. I'm sorry, my cake was what? Six. Sorry guys, my cake was six tiers. How many of it was real? Two layers, because one part was red velvet, oh, and rose. And so the other four layers of my cake were straight up styrofoam covered with fondue. So that, is that what it's called? Fondant? Oh, fondant. No. Yeah, not fondue. It was not covered with cheese. You put a sheet cake in the back. That is true. Lana is coming through with her memory right now. So I cut the one part of the cake, but you guys, they actually keep that all together for presentation. It still looks beautiful. And you actually have just a sheet cake of whatever flavor you picked with whatever icing you picked. They actually have that already all cut up for your guests in the back so that they're not waiting a whole hour for them to cut and serve the cake. It's already ready to go. Fun facts. I saved money on entertainment in a few ways. Um, I would say the main way was I actually created the playlist on my phone with Apple Music for the cocktail hour. Literally, I found a way to like make an amazing playlist with great transitions from song to song. There are so many apps that you can do this with. And what I loved was I picked all the songs that were like meaningful and memorable for me in Israel. So I thought that was beautiful. Also on our cocktail hour, we had a slideshow of our pictures throughout the like almost year of us dating and just our friendship throughout the years. I did that myself on my iMovie. Literally just took tons of pictures and videos and footage, turned it all black and white and made it look like old film. And that played during our cocktail hour with beautiful, great Frank Sinatra songs playing. I love you for sentimental reasons. All those good songs playing in the background. It was very romantic, very Parisian chic. A lot of people wonder how to save money on the bar. So one of the things that's most expensive is having an open bar and you're just like, I don't know what this tab is gonna be at the end of the night. And the last thing you want when you're getting married is going into a marriage with anxiety about your debt. How much did this cost? What is this gonna look like for us? And one of the main reasons that people divorce is off of financial stress. So you don't wanna go into your wedding doing that. So let's consider the bar. One, you could say, we're not drinking. This is a religious ceremony. I'm just saying. Put that out there, you can do that. I'm totally for it. If that is not an option for you, I have heard of some pretty cool ideas. Number one, you guys know that I love a good signature cocktail that you can actually pre-make at home in huge 
jugs and just have whoever the bartender is that you have hired. It's already pre-made, it's done, the alcohol's in it. These are, have one signature drink for the bride, one signature drink for the groom. Those drinks are free. The bar is open to these two signature cocktails and maybe some champagne. Guys, people are there at your wedding because they love you, they support you, and they want you to live happily ever after. If there is anybody that you invited to your wedding that you think is gonna judge you because you didn't have an open bar or that you think is gonna judge you because they thought something was low budget, consider that before you invite them. You don't want those people at your wedding anyway. That was just a fun gem I just threw in there for you. But when it comes to the bar, another awesome thing I'd say is Lana's family does something really cool at some of her weddings. They will get like one vodka, one white wine, one red wine, one whatever, what, like a, a tequila, a whiskey, whatever, and you put them at the tables in like these beautiful um, ice buckets. Maybe your table doesn't have the drink you want, maybe that table over there has it. It also creates great interaction with people and they're actually mixing and making their own drinks. That is an option, I think that's actually pretty cool. Don't feel pressure to spend a bunch of money to prove to anyone anything. If you are inviting these people to your wedding, make sure that they're there really for you and to support your love. Another thing that's super important is making the moments meaningful. I think a lot of us get caught up in the prices of things or how much something costs or making things look fancy and luxurious for your wedding. But I think the things that people love the most and what you should love the most are the meaningful things. So like at my wedding, I actually had a table with photos of people from my family that had passed away that I wished were there. So we had their photos on a table in memory of them. Another cool thing was I got my book that like people write to you and wish you well from Hobby Lobby in Burbank. It's really close to our studio for the real. And at lunchtime, I would go to Hobby Lobby and like pick up things that I wanted around the room. Again, super inexpensive, but meaningful. I thought what my sister did for her centerpieces of the table was really awesome. She had maybe 10 tables and she thought to herself, who were the couples that had had amazing long marriages um, that were attending her wedding? And she reached out to them and asked if she could have their wedding photo. And she got their wedding photo, printed them in black and white, and framed them on the tables. So it was like, oh, you're sitting at the Titi Fuji and Uncle Louie table. You're sitting at the Nilda and Joe table. And I think it was heartwarming to those people that were attending the wedding, walking up and being like, this is so meaningful. It wasn't an elaborate centerpiece. It wasn't, you know, a six foot tall, wet uh, floral arrangement dripping down with, pe like it was not that. It was as simple as a frame in the middle of the table surrounded by candles. It was a talking piece, brought so much nostalgia. There were people that like, were now looking for this couple in the wedding party. They're like, oh my God, I'm sitting at your table. You looked so beautiful on your wedding. Where did you get married? And it was really, really beautiful and nostalgic. So I loved that. Like for my wedding, um, these people had come a long way to celebrate us. So we wanted to do something special for them as favors. So we did two things. We did um, the giving key. We did rose gold giving key necklaces for all of our guests. And it said amour on it, A-M-O-U-R in French, which is love. So our concept was we had received love in our lives. So we passed it on to everyone else. So we gave them giving keys. That was one thing. And also they were wrapped around little mini rose gold Moet bottles, which was super cute. So we did something elaborate because people had traveled and paid for themselves to be there. And I felt like they deserved something special. My sister though, had a genius idea for her wedding. And I love the fact that I was so involved in the planning of my sister's wedding. That's why I'm like, technically I've planned two weddings, my sister's and mine. And I think what she did was genius. People, when they leave a wedding, I think a lot of times they receive things that they're never gonna use or never gonna look at. And in my sister's case, my mom actually baked my sister's favorite cookie, which is a simple black and white, it's very New York, a black and white cookie. And my mom baked them the night before and literally as a family, we sat there when they cooled off and we put them into plastic beautiful bags with ribbon, with little tags that said like Claude and Jerd. And when I tell you they were a hit because 
After you've been drinking and partying all night and the food's gone and you've had dessert, on people's way out, they were like, oh my God, this is absolutely what I'm gonna be chowing down on in the car on the way home. So people loved the cookies. They ate them all, they were all gone. People were asking for extras. It was a total hit. So think of doing something really special like that, like serving little cookies in bags, something homemade that you cooked yourself, and I think people will absolutely love it. I hope these tips were helpful to you guys. Just remember that the number one most important thing at your wedding is the love. Mwah. Don't forget to subscribe.